Hey, I'm Chris Zeff from Make Everything, and today we're going to try to make a clamp out of this railroad spike. Check it out. So for this project, I'm gonna be using this induction forge. And I've done a video on this before. Basically, it's an electric way to heat up metal really quickly. And like I said, I'm using a railroad spike as the basis of this clamp that I'm trying to make. Now this is a high carbon railroad spike, so it should be a little bit stronger and a little bit more resilient than a regular mild steel railroad spike. So I'm trying to get the head of the railroad spike down and squared up as best as possible. My goal here is to isolate that material and turn it into what will eventually be sort of the, the anvil or the grabbing spot on the clamp itself. Once I've got the head broken down, I take the point and I break that down as well. The goal here is to square that up and get rid of that point and then also basically upset the material, which is when you sort of force the material onto itself to make it a little bit wider, kind of swell it up. And I'm trying to get as much material down at the tip as I possibly can. I chisel in a little line there just as a guide mark and then I start to put a little shelf in this side as well so that I can go ahead and make that where the threads are going to come through on the actual clamp. Now I'm trying to use the different features of my anvil, the hardy hole, the edges to try to isolate these areas, you know, because I'm hammering myself. If I had somebody else helping me, what I could do is I could use what's called the top tool to, you know, kind of position exactly where I want and then have someone else strike it, or I could try to do it myself. But I like using my anvil and the features that it has to kind of build in these little features on the piece. Now I just added a bottom and top tool to what's called a guillotine tool. I have a video making this on my channel as well, and I'm going to be adding a fuller across the entire length of the railroad spike. Now the goal here is to create sort of an I-beam construction, something that will add a lot of strength and also move some of the material out. It'll actually give it a little bit more interesting of a look and it'll help make the thing much stronger as opposed to just being a square piece of stock. Now the dies that I have in here are just half inch bar that I welded to my top and bottom die and I'm striking that top piece with my hammer as I go. Now they're tapered on either end, so you can see I can sort of transition into and out of my fuller, and it actually works really well to create a nice consistent fuller on both sides of the material at once, which is really nice. Once that's done, I can sort of straighten things out and clean things up. And then I can go ahead and start bending the actual clamp shape. Now I had marked this out in advance with a little bit of soapstone, and I'm being very careful here not to try to do too much in one heat. If you try to do too much in one heat, you have a tendency to rip or break the material. So basically by marking it out and getting it nice and hot, I'm able to bend the pieces over and I'm not going 100% 90 degrees to the back because I want there to be a little bit of a curve in the back. So I'm, I'm trying to eyeball it. I'm doing all of this just basically out of my head. I don't have a drawing or a set of plans or any dimensions that I'm trying to work off of. The goal here is to just sort of let the material decide where it wants to be and let the shape kind of figure itself out based on how much material I have to work with. The cool thing about working with the railroad spike is that there is no additional material I can get. You know, it's not like I could choose a slightly longer, slightly wider bar. The railroad spike is a set shape and I have to do with it what I can. So now I've got the basis of the shape kind of figured out. I just have to do a little bit of tweaking over in the vise to try to straighten it. And the vise is great for that. You can sort of grab it and pretty easily twist it. And the induction forge really helps you isolate the heat, which is really, really nice. Makes working on something small like this really great. Now I want to clean up sort of the anvil side of the clamp. And I just put that in this swivel jaw vise and give it a little bit of a file work. And then I'll file the top as well so that I can start to prepare to drill the hole, which will eventually be the thread for the screw. Now I mark out what's essentially the center of that upset piece on the top, and I hit it with a little center punch so I can use it as a drilling guide over on the drill press. Now because I haven't quenched this, the metal isn't hard at all. It's basically you know still easy to be drilled. It's still pretty malleable, which is good. And I start with an eighth inch drill bit and I work my way up to a 5 16 drill, which will eventually be for the 3 8 tap that I'm going to use on this. 
Now I thought about using a slightly larger thread to kind of make the clamp even sort of bigger, uh, but I thought the 3 8 bolt that I had tried in there and the 3 8 kind of size when I compare it to the size of the clamp itself looked proportional and I think that that's going to kind of give me the best result. Now before I go over and try to tap this, I do hit it with a quick countersink and then I'm just using a hand tap here because this is kind of a hard part to grab and I wouldn't want to break it using any sort of my electrical taps. The material was actually a little tough to tap. It does have a little bit of hardness to it versus a mild steel, but you can see I was able to get good threads and that's just a 3 8 bolt. Now I considered just using a bolt on this, but after thinking about it, I decided it'd be better to just make one from scratch. So it could be totally kind of custom to me. So I'm over here in my machine shop on the lathe and I've got a piece of three quarter inch bar stock in there and I'm gonna be turning this down into the screw and handle. Now I want a 3 8 shoulder to be kind of cut in this and then I'm gonna thread it. And the insert that I have in that tool is not that great. So my surface finish wasn't great, but since the entire thing is basically gonna be threads, it's okay. I work down the diameter, checking it with a micrometer as I go. And then I can go ahead and kind of clean up the end and I can get my geometric die head on there. Now a geometric die head is something you may not be familiar with. Essentially it's a cutting tool for cutting threads on a lathe. Uh, and it's a little bit easier than single point threading especially when you have to do a long thread like this on a skinny piece of material. It has four dies that cut the material in four spots and they kick the threads out the front typically. And what it does is it opens and closes as it's cutting the thread. So once you're done cutting the length of the thread, once you give it a little bit of a resistance on the tailstock, it actually opens up. You can see it pulling away from the back of it. And when it opens up, it pops open and releases those cutters so that there's no way for them to cut anymore. And you can see how quickly I was able to cut a really long thread. It's about four and a half inches long uh, on this piece of steel. Super easy and very controlled. It leaves a really, really nice thread that's adjustable. And I really like using the geometric die head when I can. Now that's done, I just clean up sort of the top of this screw and give myself a nice clean looking area that I can drill a hole through and put a handle through eventually. I put some little chamfers on there and then I put a little chamfer in the bottom of the thread down here for sort of the pad that I'm going to be making to put on the end of these threads. I use another piece of three quarter inch bar stock to make the pad and I sort of just eyeball this. I want it to have a little bit of a taper like the kind of pad you'd see on a factory available clamp but I do actually put a little bit of a, a section of thread in there so it can thread on to the bottom of the screw that I already made. Now this is something that I could change out if I wanted to, but I wanted it to be able to kind of pivot and move around, which is why I cut that weird little chamfer into the threads themselves. I tapped it with the same 3 8 cleaned it up, and then I can cut it off the lathe and I can put it on the screw thread. thought about putting like a little piece of leather or something on this to kind of make it a soft clamp, but maybe that's something I'll do in the future. You can see how it threads on there and I just have to go over to the grinder and clean it up. Now I'm using the slack belt on my grinder so I can kind of get some nice little chamfers and curves and then I can go ahead and drill a hole in the actual screw itself. Now I drilled for a quarter inch here so that I could put a quarter inch bar through it and I'll use the induction forge and the vise to actually upset the ends of this as well and make it so that it's permanently affixed in there. This is essentially like making the head on a nail. There's a couple different ways I could have done this. I could have welded something to it, but I thought since the rest of it was forged, I might as well go with the forge look on this as well. What's tricky about this is you have to make one side and you have to put it through the tool and then you have to be able to clamp it and make the other side. Now finishing it is a little more difficult because it's locked inside that screw. Once it's on there, it's pretty rough, so I go back over to the grinder and I start cleaning it up and making it look nice. You want this to be really comfortable when you touch it in your hand, so it has to be really smooth and doesn't have to have any sharp edges. What I did right there was I took my two inch belt from my two x 72 grinder and I split it in half using a little razor blade jig that I made. And this allows me to just get into tighter spaces and using a one inch belt is really nice sometimes when you need to grind something relatively small. This is great because I'm able to get next to the screw and really clean up the edge on this and clean up the whole length of that bar so it slides back and forth nicely and you can 
actually use it without it feeling like it's gonna cut you. I also do a little bit of grinding on the bottom of the threads and continue to clean that up till it's perfect. Last but not least, I just have to do a little bit of straightening because the way my screw came through, the pad was hitting a little uneven on the bottom sort of anvil of the clamp. So I heat it back up in the induction forge, straighten it out in the vise. This thing is looking really good. It's ready to be wire wheeled. Now it still has a rough kind of scale finish on it and the wire wheel does a great job of cleaning that up and brightening it. It also takes any of the high spots or any spot that kind of could bother your finger and gets rid of it almost immediately. It also is really good for the threads on that screw that I made. It kind of cleans those up and makes it super smooth. You can run it with one finger. Last but not least, put my maker's mark in it. And then I can put this thing together. I do kind of a test assembly and then I'm going to be adding some finish. For the finish, I'm going to be using a boiled linseed oil, which is just a nice kind of natural protector. You can put it on there. It, it gives a little bit of a coating and a little bit of a sheen. It gets those bright spots a little bit brighter and it actually makes the dark spots a little richer and overall I'm super happy with how this thing came out. I think it looks beautiful. It works really really well um, and it's something that I'll have in my shop for years to come. Another project that I really enjoyed while using the railroad spike and the induction forge and I can't wait to make more stuff like this. All right, that about does it for this video. This was really fun to make. Um, I did make another attempt at this kind of the day before. It didn't turn out great. So, you know, you go to school on the first one. Um, I really like using the railroad spike as a start because it's just a set amount of metal. There's no way to add more to it. In this case, obviously I had to make a screw, but you know, once you've got this started, you've got to just figure out the shapes you can make with this set piece of steel. So I really enjoy the challenge of making stuff out of it. If you haven't seen my video where I made a pair of scissors out of a railroad spike, check that out. There'll be a link down below and I'll put a little card right up here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun making it. If you want to see more videos like this, leave a comment down below and give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy watching it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, more videos of my shop making stuff, talking about tools and making a lot of cool different things. If you want to see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, follow me right here at Make Everything Shop on Facebook and Instagram. I'm always posting kind of updates as I go. And uh, yeah, this was really fun. I can't wait to do more stuff like this and I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks.